Welcome to The Dental Brief, the world's direct, right-to-the-point podcast produced to get you the information you need to learn and grow your practice. To learn more about our guests and find links to information discussed on our show, visit our website, dentalbrief.com. On to today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief. I have with me today a very special guest. Um, Not only as our guests today have a terrific amount of experience um, as a consultant and coach working with dentists, but he's also a dentist himself, Um, kind of that killer one-two punch. Uh, Everyone say hello um, to Dr. Don Deems and Dr. Deems, say hello to our audience. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. We're thankful, like I said, to have you here. Very grateful. Um, First, I want you to tell me a little bit about how you became a dentist. Um, Then we're going to go from there to how you got into coaching and working with other dentists. So kind of what's your history and what made you want to be a dentist? Oh, how I wanted to be a dentist. Um, Actually, I didn't. (laughs) Forced into it. I thought I wanted to be a physician. Okay. Uh, and uh, started out uh, in undergrad school. And then uh, when I, somebody said, you know, you ought to really look into that before you, you do it. And I'm like, you know, that, that, that sounds pretty smart. And uh, so I did. And I decided that I didn't want to work in uh, that end of the uh, body. I preferred to work in the other end of the body. So then I started, um, you know, talking to a few dentists. And I really, really liked uh what dentists uh, could do in terms of running their own business and being independent and, and kind of living and dying by their own um, decisions. Um, and so that was very uh, attractive to me. Um, I also saw that uh, dentists could really have a say so in what their life could be like, whereas most of the positions I saw kind of had no life, not really, in my opinion. Sure. So I um, just said, you know, I think I'm going to do this dental thing. And um, and so, you know, that's that's really kind of how I did it. It was I wouldn't say by default, but kind of almost by default. And it's been a great decision uh, to do that. Uh, I have a younger brother who's a physician and um, yeah, he may have made more money than me. But, you know, so what, uh, you know, when we look at uh happiness and life and, and success and fulfillment and enjoyment and stuff. Uh, I don't think dentistry is comparable to anything else. And so uh, it's hard. It's also one of the hardest jobs out there, but I think the rewards can be, you know, very dramatic. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So you go from being a dentist to being a coach. How'd that happen? You know, uh, I got to a point in my career where I felt that I was just burned out, that I was looking for something else to do uh, without going into a, a lengthy history. Uh, you know, I, I just I, I was at, at a stage in my life that um, I felt like I was holding all the marbles and I really just didn't know what to do. And um, it was very very difficult. Uh, in fact, my partner had committed suicide Jeez. and um, it left me uh, owing a tremendous amount of money to his estate. So there was a lot of pressure to, uh, to work and to perform. And, uh, and so all of a sudden, uh, here I am running a, a large practice and really not knowing what to do. So I, I stumbled around for years trying to figure out what to do. And uh, I was looking actually for a way out, uh, looking to do something different uh, because I was frustrated and, you know, burned out, like I said. So um, a good friend of mine said, well, you know, you ought to do, you, you ought to become a coach. And I'm like, what the heck is a coach? I mean, right. I had grown up playing sports, you know, I was sure. a big baseball and basketball player. And so I didn't know what it was. So got a few books, read about it, uh, talk to a dentist who was actually a coach who who's not coaching anymore. He's completely retired. And he suggested that I go to, that I go to a coach training program, which I ended up doing for three years. Uh, and at the end of that three years, uh, I then had the tools I needed to actually create the kind of practice that, that I really wanted, you know, that made me happy. So um, I thought, well, I don't want to leave dentistry. I, I want to stay in dentistry. 
but I also really have a passion for helping other dentists in this great profession. Um, and so people just, you know, need those tools um, and that support in order to do it because most dentists are solo dentists, you know, and uh, who do they talk to, you know, and, and who do they go to? And I really, really uh, thought that the coaching process was uh, the best way to go long-term for somebody uh, versus other forms of help out there. So that, you know, I, I, after I became a coach uh, and continued and then went through many years to uh, be certified as a professional uh, coach uh, through the International Coach Federation. Um, and so I just continue doing it. Um, you know, even today, I still still coach and still practice dentistry and love both of them. Sure. I, I, you know, I want to talk about the coaching um, and what it really takes and what, you know, what you have to put in to, to, to be a coach, to, to be a legitimate coach. And I, when I say legitimate, I say that because, you know, I'm pretty sure you can buy something on the internet that that'll say that you're a coach and you can advertise that you're a coach and market yourself that way and what have you. And I, I see people doing it. I see people that have never um, owned a business that all of a sudden coaching people, um, on businesses and what have you. So we'll touch on that a little bit, but before we get there, let's talk a little bit about, and you know, if we could probably avoid the COVID discussion, I would like to just because it's talked about so much. And I, I hope that we're getting pretty close to not having uh, COVID related conversations all the time, but what, what is a common thing, you know, with this experience that you have, what is something that dentists often come up to you and say, or, you know, call you and say, what is a big problem that you see that they're struggling with or need help with? And what, what makes them want to reach out to a coach in the first place? Well, that's a great question. There's obviously a lot of things. Uh, I would say that one of the top things that uh, are on a dentist's mind um, is uh, how to deal with staff issues. Uh, they feel pretty inept uh, to do that. They don't feel they have the tools to lead and, and to work their way out. So they get really frustrated. Um, that's how they come to me. Um, that's not a, a huge problem to solve, actually. Um, and once they see that, then we really can get into other parts of uh, their practice and their personal life um, to really help them have the kind of experience of life in their practice that they really want something that's very fulfilling and engaging um, uh, all the way to the point of um, ultimately leaving their legacy um, in you know for their life and their practice so that's what they come to me as you know initially uh, a lot of times at least is um, you know I've got this problem with my staff you know sure. and it's giving me headaches I'm tired of this you know what do I do and uh, very frustrated. So that's usually it. So what are the, what are the, some steps um, that dentists can take to, to help in that staffing? What do they need to put together to kind of solve that common problem? Well, you know, I, I, I would tell dentists, uh, you know, that I want them to understand that and make that this assumption that, uh, that the problems that they're having are really systems problems and they're not really people problems. We tend to think of them as people problems, but they're generally just, you know, system problems. Now there are the exceptions. So what do I mean when I say systems? I mean, there's, you know, lots of systems in a practice, but as it relates to employees, uh, you know, some of the things that we look at are compensation reviews and pay raises, growth conferences, job descriptions, termination and training and, you know, agreements and hiring and interviewing and policy manuals and God, employee performance reviews and, and even personnel files, uh, things, you know, all of which we never got any information about in dental school. And once we understand that if we can get all these systems in place, then really the problems will solve themselves. Sure. Um, it, it's just it's, it's, uh, it's not rocket science. Um, but yet, uh, most dentists, uh, in my experience, at least the ones who I've talked to come to me and, you know, are just don't know where to start, where to begin. Um, sure. 
fact, it was a, a common theme for, um, you know, many of the, of, of the many programs that I would do. That one was most often asked uh, to discuss, which was, you know, uh, how do we solve, you know, staff problems? And it seems to be a, a, a struggle, you know, an area that people struggle with a lot. Um, yeah. And it affects them dramatically, you know, in their practice, uh, not just the bottom line, but their health, their enjoyment of life, of their practice, um, um, you know, their stress level. Um, I mean, just everything uh, when they've got all these issues and they can't really focus on dentistry. And in my opinion, um, I think it's one of the reasons, too, that many dentists are, you know, just looking to get out of the quote unquote management aspect of dentistry uh, and just they just kind of you know want to do the dentistry um, sure. which is great you know um, but you also give up a lot if you you know decide to go that route yeah I had a conversation today is kind of similar with someone at about we were, it was a political conversation and I was saying that you know I don't think people would have as much problem with government no matter what side they're on if it was effective right I don't think anyone really cares the size of anything as long as it's effective right. I think we kind of see that with uh, you know, practices. And as far as these systems are concerned, um, yeah. I think just how effective things are really matter. And I got to imagine with your experience, and I, I shouldn't say that I actually know this because I talk to a lot of people, as you know, um, with the right systems in place, you know, that you can come into almost any process, any practice and implement systems and processes and, and almost have a guaranteed success rate. Correct. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, it's absolutely math. Yeah, it, it it like I said, it's not rocket science. Uh, however, it it is the thing that is a big stumbling block for people. It's a huge obstacle. Sure. Um, you know, so, so um, yeah. Let's talk a little bit. Let's shift gears and talk a little bit about, or let's go back to um, hiring a coach, hiring a consultant. Mm -hmm. um, first, and I'll keep this short. There's got to be pros and cons to working with a coach who was a dentist, right? I mean, there's got to be. Um, I know there's a lot of benefits to it because they were a dentist, but there's probably some downsides to that too, right? Mm, yeah. Um, I don't, you know, that, that's interesting. I've never had somebody ask me, what are the downsides? Uh, if anything, the downsides are that I'm working during the day, just like they are. Sure. Um, and so, uh, you know, the way I see it, the downsides are really for me is that I've got to work the evenings, uh, you know, and talk to them when, when they're off too. Um, so I, that's really, I, I guess the downside, the other downside, um, though, that probably comes to my mind first is that, you know, if you look at, uh, consulting in general, consulting, a consultant will come into a practice and, uh, say, okay, so show me your numbers, you know, show me what's going on. Let me look around the place, et cetera, et cetera. They're going to give you a, a, you know, basically a prescription to say, okay, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And uh, I'm going to monitor this. And, you know, I'm going to charge you this amount of money at the end of the year. You know, uh, this is what you, you know, should have. Um, working with a coach, it, it's, a, a totally different approach to that. Um, it may involve a little bit of consulting because we, we do want to know what's the situation going on, but to, to effectively work with a coach, you've got to be willing to engage and to put in the time and to really learn um, what you need to learn um, in order to uh, have your practice move forward um, and to keep moving forward. Um, you know, I, it, it's not, you know, a, a big secret, I think, but there are more consultants in dentistry, uh, per professional probably than any other profession that's out there. Sure. And, uh, you know, so if, and I don't, I'm not trying to offend any consultants, but a, a consultant again, you know, they, they make themselves, um, you know, very, uh, somebody that, that needs that they want to continue working with because they haven't figured out how to think for themselves. You see, right. when a dentist hasn't done the work to look inside themselves for the answer, to figure out what they need to do, what, what are the skills they need to learn? What are the, 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 the 
the personal elements that they need to develop, et cetera, um, then they're going to constantly be looking outside themselves for the answer. And there's always going to be a consultant out there to do that. Right. So actually, most of my clients have worked with two, three, even four consultants, you know, already in their career, and they're looking for something different because they don't like the fact that, okay, the first consultant was great. The second one, I learned a little bit more. The third, I learned a little bit more, but you know what? I'm not making much headway anymore and I want something different. And so that's where they come to this realization that, you know, uh, I've got to approach this differently. And um, that's usually when I get a phone call. Um, The person who's just looking for somebody to tell me the answers, um, you know, I'm not their guy. So that's how it works. Sounds like there's a, a different level of accountability there too, right? In coaching. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, accountability is extremely important. Um, you know, that's something that I have to create with the client or the dentist um, from the word go. Um, if that dentist can't be accountable, then we're not going to get anywhere. Uh, you know, there have been a few situations over the past 20 years where I fired myself as a coach politely uh, because, you know, that person just wasn't really willing to engage right. and to, to do the work that was necessary. You know, again, that work involves looking inside a person's self for the answers, figuring out what needs to be done rather than looking outside themselves. You yeah. Know, which is that makes a lot of sense. Fortunately, so, common. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. I want to encourage our audience to check out your website it's Dr. Don Deems, that's D-R-D-O-N-D-E-E-M-S dot com, Dr. Don Deems dot com. Doctor, thank you so much for coming on the program today. We'd love to Absolutely. Have you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Did you know you can weigh in on today's topic on Facebook? Search The Dental Brief on Facebook or visit our website, dentalbrief.com, and just follow the link. We look forward to having you join us again on another episode of The Dental Brief.